What's good gamers? With the recent reveal that we'll be getting a solo dungeon next playtest, I thought that now would be a great time to go ahead and go over a solo tier list for new and experienced players. Now I'm going to start off with a new player solo tier list and then make the experienced player tier list at the end of the video where I rank the classes after people have a good understanding of them. Starting out, we have the Rogue, which is guaranteed to be one of the first classes that people think of when they hear solo. However, the Rogue actually has a rather high learning curve due to it having the shortest swing radius in the game and having to plan your fights accordingly. For the starter list, we're going to be putting Rogue at B tier due to the fact that they can still put out some high damage and make some great plays as a new player. Once you start learning to use throwing knives and your sweet spot for trading with others, this can put you higher on the list. Next up, we have Fighter. This is hands down the most versatile class in Dark and Darker. However, that means they don't really excel in one playstyle specifically. That's great for a new player still trying to figure out which type of playstyle fits them the best in the game, and being able to use any weapon after taking the Weapon Mastery perk allows for both melee and ranged gameplay, as well as having sprint available almost half the duration of the match, which means that you can hunt down targets or run away with ease depending on your situation. On top of that, Second Wind is one of the strongest self-heals in the game, and it doesn't require a long cast animation like Ranger's Field Rations, so it can be used in combat easily to make you tankier. You can also refresh Second Wind by using campfires. In all, I had to put Fighter at A tier for new players, as it has extreme versatility, speed, and survivability. Next up we have the Cleric, which is not a traditional solo class in pretty much any game, yet this class has great potential to solo with the use of judgment and also being able to out tank its enemies. However, clearly this class kit is designed for more group play and you would get a lot more out of it there, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have the potential to smash through the solo lobbies. In order to do well as a solo cleric, however, you must have some sort of knowledge of your class and the other classes, so for the starter list, we're going to be putting cleric as D tier. Arguably, it could be around D plus or C tier, but it takes a lot of skill. Fourth up on the list, we have Barbarian. This class is capable of one-shotting most other classes in the head, however, it is also one of the slowest classes in the game, followed by the Cleric. This means, most of the time, if on equal skill level, your opponent will outmaneuver you or kite you until you're dead. So knowing how to bob and weave will be your biggest friend as a Barbarian, because the moment you close a gap, it's GG. But with Barbarians having slow swings and movement speed, the only range they have being throwing axes, most players aren't going to use those. We're going to be putting Barbarian at the C tier for brand new players venturing into solo. Moving on, the next class that we're going to talk about is Wizard. This is the second most versatile class right now after the Fighter. Wizards can use a lot of different weapons, including staves, books, a dagger with a crystal ball, crystal sword, and even a crossbow, as well as have some of the most useful abilities in the game currently. Fireball can break down doors, magic missiles can one or two shot most mobs with the headshot multiplier, and you get an invis, a speed boost, zap is phenomenal at poking down targets before they reach you or if they're running away. Honestly, it's no secret that Wizard was one of the strongest classes in December, however, it's extremely easy to die. You have virtually no armor and a ranger with a longbow can one-shot you in the face from across the room. Which means there's very little room for error in this class, especially since you can damage yourself with spills too. For a starter tier list, I would have to put the wizard at B tier. Once you get more understanding of the game slash map, this is easily an S tier class, however there's a lot to learn early on and the class has a high skill floor. Last but not least, we have the Ranger, arguably the easiest class to pick up at level 1. No class performs in PvE the way a Ranger does, however you have to have some kind of aim in order to secure kills as a Ranger. Dark and Darker has drop and projectile speed in the game, which has a much higher skill level than hitscan, but that's all it comes down to in my opinion is aim. The class is set up for solo play, and other than having an invisibility, it has everything that you need to succeed solo. So we'll be putting the Ranger at A tier for starter players. 
Honestly, I couldn't possibly put a single class into S tier for starting out, as there's a lot of little things to learn in the game that make your class stronger in regards to using the map to your advantage. Now, let's get into my tier list for solos for the experienced player who knows the ins and outs of other classes and has a good understanding of their surroundings. To kick things off, we're going to be bumping the rogue from B tier to A tier. The only thing stopping this class from being S tier is the fact that they have no range outside of throwing knives and no self heals in their kit. So we're going to put them about in the middle in between S and A. Next up we have fighter, and fighter in my opinion is honestly just going to stay in the A tier. For me, as they do everything well but don't really excel past the other classes in damage or what they do specially. Next, I personally think a well-skilled cleric will be wrecking people once the solo dungeon comes out. Once judgment and a mace to the face hits you, you're dead, and since it's solo, those heals are going to absolutely be a problem with you being the only one hitting them. So we'll be putting cleric into the A tier for experienced solo players. All the way up from D, that's quite a jump, but the class has a very high skill floor, in my opinion. Going back to the Barbarian, we'll be putting this class into the B for Barbarian tier. Skilled players will still kite Barbarians around like a lost puppy dog, however they do still pump out damage, and a skilled Barbarian will be using their throwing axes, so that's why we put Barbarian in the B tier. Finally, we're going to be putting Wizard into none other than the S tier, of course followed by the Ranger. Both of these classes have everything that they need to perform well in solos due to their extreme amount of utility and being able to use range to their advantage pretty much all the time. To be honest, you can make pretty much any of these work in solo. I'm trying to speak on equal skill level, equal gear, trying to make the situation as fair as possible um, from personal experience. In all, Iron Mace has done an extremely good job at making each class have its specific role and not necessarily taking away from the identity of that class. I think that all of these classes are extremely useful in group play, in their own situation, uh, in their specific comp, but this is just my personal opinion on my experience in the game over the last four tests of what I think would work out the best in solos. Obviously, we're going to have to wait and see how things actually play out this coming test in a few days. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, but that's all I have for the day. Let me know down in the comments if you agree with this list or what adjustments you would make. That's all I've got. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.